She had enormous talent, housed in a pint-sized body. From the time she was a small child, Helen Baylor knew she would be a singer. My mother and my aunt would put me in little talent shows around the neighborhood, and I would win. And I knew it was something, every time I'd get up to sing, I would win these talent shows. Helen was just nine when she began attending church with her grandmother. It was here that she sang on her first official stage and made a decision to give her life to Jesus Christ. That was my first, you know, real encounter with, um, with Jesus. I really loved the Lord at that time and started singing in the choir and, and just started, um, really I had a heart for the things of God, even that, that young. At the age of 12, Helen's life took an important turn. Her family moved from Oklahoma to Los Angeles, California, the birthplace of stars. And Helen had an aunt who was determined to get her young niece started on that path to stardom. Her aunt became her first manager of sorts, taking Helen's talents and selling them to nightclub owners all around the Los Angeles area. Well, her persistence paid off. And at the age of 12, Helen had her first professional gig at a nightclub. Overnight, little Helen was born. Her commitment to Christ forgotten, Helen was on her way to a dream. At the age of 13, Helen was offered her first recording contract. I opened up for Aretha Franklin, and I opened for Stevie Wonder, and I even opened once for Bill Cosby, who was doing his stand-up comedy routine at that time. Moms Mabley, B.B. King. So everybody that came to town, and then I even went out of the area a few times, but everyone that came to Los Angeles, I was the opener for, for a couple of years. Her career was on a fast track, too fast for a young teenager. At the age of 17, Helen joined the touring company of the hit musical Hair. The musical sang the praises of free sex, drugs, and alcohol. Helen began living her role. With the drugs, it, it just took me, put me in another whole state of mind. I didn't care about anything after a while but getting high and performing. I didn't care about people very much anymore. But Helen didn't limit her experimenting to drugs. She also looked for peace in religion. But on the inside of me, I always knew, because I, I tried everything. I tried astrology. I tried numerology. I tried meditation. I tried Buddhism. I tried, at one point, I was a black panther, and I was a Muslim, and I was power to the people. I tried it all, but in here, Nothing ever took the place of that Jesus that I met when I was nine years old. Helen left the cast of hair and began performing backup for the 70s hit group, The Captain and Tennille. She then joined the stage show of Shaka Khan, where the drugs and drinks flowed freely. We were going out high on stage and leaving the stage drunk. By now, Helen's drug use was all-consuming. Gradually, the calls for work quit coming, and depression set in. She tried to quit the drugs herself, only to start all over again. Until one day, in 1982, Helen was watching a Christian television program. And I was so strung out on, on dope at the time, and we had dope in the house and everything. And I just said, it's a simple, take this away from me. And I was instantly delivered, instantly set free. And I felt that washing, that cleansing. And I felt him really almost like love me, hold me. In that moment, Helen's life changed. She made a promise to God that she wouldn't return to the secular music industry. She became a committed wife and mother. And for six years, she rarely sang in public. Today, Helen has a recording contract with Word Records. She sings for a different reason, never forgetting the grace of God who loved her at her worst. And I'm happy. He's given me a joy and a peace that I never knew. I was always striving for something. And now my rest and my hope and my trust is in him. And I can just lean on him, knowing that if I didn't sing tomorrow, that he still loved me, that I'd be still loved by him and still the same. So I don't have to prove anything to my father. I don't have to prove anything to Jesus like I had to do when I was out there. Take all of this, little boy. 